How's it going, people? It's been a little while since I picked on this book. I don't feel like drinking, so I'm having some Java Monster. It's also forbidden, so what the fuck. Alright, section 45. It's got a massive masthead, so let's do it. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet to the church at Kirtland, Ohio, March 7, 1831, prefacing his record of this revelation, the prophet states that at this age of the church, many false reports and foolish stories were published and circulated to prevent people from investigating the work or embracing the faith. See History of the Church, Volume 1, page 158. Jesus Christ, the Advocate for his people with the, the Father, blessed state of Enon and his people, uh, prediction made uh, to the disciples in former days cited, times of the Gentiles signalized by the light of the gospel. In the same generation, the times of the Gentiles to be fulfilled. That's us. Most of us. Uh, some of us, huh? Uh, a desolating sickness named among the many tribulations preceding the coming of the Lord in judgment. Significance of the parable of the fig trees and that of the ten virgins. That would be nice. A little explanation there. Gathering of the people from the eastern lands into the western uh, countries. Promise of the establishment of the New Jerusalem. Eventual triumph of Zion. All right, now we can start. One, hearken, O ye people of my church. To whom the kingdom has been given, hearken ye and give ear to him who laid the foundation of the earth, who made the heavens and all the hosts thereof, and by whom all things were made which live and move and have a being. And again, I say, hearken unto my voice, lest death shall overtake you. In an hour when ye think not the summer shall be past, and the harvest ended, and your souls not saved. Three, listen to him. Who is the advocate of the Father? Who is pleading for your cause before him? Pretty please. He's pleading to his dad, who is also him. Uh, <clears throat> for saying, Father, behold the sufferings and death of him who did no sin. He's talking about himself, to himself. <laughs> in whom thou wast well pleased. Behold the blood of thy Son, which was shed, the blood of him whom thou gavest, that thyself might be glorified. Sounds a little circular, don't it? <sighs> Five. Wherefore, Father, spare these my brethren that believe on my name, that they may come unto me and have everlasting life. Please. Six. 
hearken, O ye people of my church, and ye elders listen together, and hear my voice, while it is called today, and harden not your hearts. For verily I say unto you, that I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the light and the life of the world, a light that shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 8. I, come un I came unto mine own, and mine own received me not. But unto as many as received me gave I power to do many miracles, and to become the sons of God, and even unto them that believed on my name gave my power to obtain eternal life. Nine. And even so, I have set mine everlasting covenant unto the world to be a light to the world and to be a standard for my people and for the Gentiles to seek uh, to seek to it and to be a messenger before my face to prepare the way before me. 10. Wherefore came ye unto it? And when and with him that cometh I will reason as with men in days of old. And I will show unto you my strong reasoning. 11. Wherefore, hearken ye together, and let me show unto you even my wisdom, the wisdom of him whom ye say is the God of Enoch and his brethren. 12. Who went separated from the earth, and who were separated from the earth, and were received unto myself, a city reserved until a day of righteousness shall come, a day which was sought for my sought for by all holy men, and they found it not because of wickedness and abominations. Don't mind if I do. Hmm. It's the mean bean. Thirteen. And confessed they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Fourteen. But obtain a promise that they should find it and see it in their flesh. 15. Wherefore, hearken, and I will reason with you. I'd like that. I'd like that. And I will speak unto you in prophecy as unto men in days of old. 16. And I will show it plainly as I showed it unto my disciples, as I stood before them in the flesh, and spake unto them, saying, As ye have asked of me concerning the signs of my coming, in the day when I shall come in my glory in the clouds of heaven, to fulfill the promises that I have made unto your fathers. 17. For as ye have looked upon the long absence of your spirits from your bodies to be a bondage, I will show unto you how the day of redemption shall come, and also the restoration of the scattered Israel. 18. And now ye behold this temple, which is in Jerusalem, which ye call the house of God, 
and your enemies say that this house shall never fall. 19. But verily I say unto you, that desolation shall come upon this generation as a thief in the night. Uh, thief in the night. This generation, that, you're writing this in 1831, brah. What's up with that? It's 2012. It, this people shall be destroyed and scattered among all nations. 20. And this temple which ye now see shall be thrown down, that there shall not be left one stone upon another. 21. And it shall come to pass. That this generation of Jews shall not pass away until every desolation which I have told you concerning them shall come to pass. That's a twofer. Twenty-two. Ye say that ye know that the end of the world cometh. Ye say also that ye know that the heavens and the earth shall pass away. 23. And in this ye say truly, for so it is. But these things which I have told you shall not pass away until, it, until all shall be fulfilled. 24. And this I have told you concerning Jerusalem. And when that day shall come, shall a remnant be scattered among all nations. 25. But they shall be gathered again, but they shall remain until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Like 1831? 26. And in that day shall be heard of wars and rumors of wars. And the whole earth shall be in commotion, and men's hearts shall fail them. And they shall say that Christ delayeth his coming until the end of the earth. 27. And the love of men shall wax cold, and iniquity shall abound. 28. And when the times of the Gentiles is come in, a light shall break forth among them that sit in darkness, and it shall be the fullness of my gospel. 29. But they receive it not, for they perceive not the light, and they turn their hearts from me because of the precepts of men. 30. And in that generation shall the times of the Gentiles be fu fulfilled. 31. And there shall be men standing in that generation that shall not pass until they shall see an overflowing scourge. For a desolating sickness shall cover the land. Sounds nasty. 32. But my disciples shall stand in holy places and shall not be moved. But among the wicked men shall lift up their voices and curse God and die. 33. And there shall be earthquakes also in divers places, and many desolations. Yet men will harden their hearts against me, and they will take up the sword, one against another, and they will kill one another. Dude, we don't even use swords anymore. I'm not talking about these days. <laughs> 34. And now. 
when I, the Lord, had spoken these words unto my disciples, they were troubled. 35. And I said unto them, Be not troubled, for when all these things shall come to pass. Thank you, JC. Ye may know that the promises which have been made unto you shall be fulfilled. 36. And when the light shall break, uh, shall begin to break forth, it shall be with them like unto a parable which I will show you. 37. Ye look and behold the fig trees. And ye see them with their eye. See them with your eyes. That makes more sense. <laughs> and ye say, when they begin to shoot forth, and their leaves are yet not uh, are yet tender, that summer is now nigh at hand. It sounds like a bunch of math. Here. I'm not sure. I'm not gonna look at the footnotes. There's a buttload of footnotes though. Alright. And you see, uh, when they began to shoot forth, that the leaves are yet tender that summer now nigh, wait, is now nigh at hand. 38. Even so, it shall be in that day when they shall see all these things. Then shall they know that the hour is nigh, 39, and it shall come to pass. That he that feareth me shall be looking forth. For the great day of the Lord to come, even for the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. 40. And they shall see signs and wonders, for they shall be shown forth in the heavens above and in the earth beneath. 41. And they shall behold blood and fire and vapors of smoke. 42. And before the day of the Lord shall come, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon be turned into blood, and the stars fall from heaven. Fall where? Hopefully not here. <laughs> First of all, it'd take forever. <laughs> uh, and, uh, whatever. We just need one star to fall. And this is the one that got darkened. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sounds so astronomically sound, doesn't it? 43. And the remnant shall be gathered into this place. 44. And then they shall look for me. And behold, I will come. And they shall see me. In the clouds of heaven, clothed with power and great glory, with all the holy angels, and he that watches not for me shall be cut off. 45. But before the arm of the Lord shall fall, an angel shall sound his trump, and the saints Saints that have slept shall come forth to meet me in the cloud. Somewhere over the rainbow. 46. Wherefore, if ye have slept in peace, blessed are ye. For as you now, uh, for as you now behold me, and know that I am, even so shall ye come unto me, and your souls shall live, 
and your redemption shall be perfected, and the saints shall come forth from the four quarters of the earth. 47. Then shall the arm of the Lord fall upon the nations. 48. And then shall the Lord set his foot upon his mount. And it shall cleave it in twain, and the earth shall tremble and reel to and fro, and the heavens shall also shall shake. It's going to shake the heavens. Wow. 49. And the Lord shall utter his voice, and all the ends of the earth shall hear it. And the nations of the earth shall mourn, and they that have laughed shall see their folly. 50. And calamity shall cover the mocker, and the scorner shall be consumed. And they that have watched for iniquity shall be hewn down and cast into the fire. I've heard that before many times. It's so pleasant to hear that. A lot of people would like to do it for God, just in case God ain't there. <laughs> 51. And then shall the Jews look upon me and say, What are these wounds in thy hands and in thy feet? 52. Then shall they know that I am the Lord. For I will say unto them, These wounds are the wounds which I was, with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. I am he who was lifted up. I am, uh, sorry, uh, am Jesus that was crucified. I am the Son of God. 53. And then shall they weep because of their iniquities. Then shall they lament because they persecuted their king. Yeah, what's up with that? He's a king. He's in a royal lineage, but he's the savior of the world. The king of a little patch of land. That's what he's going for. 54. And then shall the heathen nations be redeemed. And they that know no law shall have part in the first resurrection. And it shall be tolerable for them. 55. And Satan shall be bound, that he shall have no place in the hearts of the children of men. Shouldn't have let him in the garden in the first place, dipshit. 56. And at that day, when I shall come in my glory, shall the parable be fulfilled, which I spake concerning the ten virgins. 57. And they that are wise, and have received the truth, and have taken the Holy Spirit for their guide, and have not been deceived, Verily I say unto you, They shall not be hewn down, and cast into the fire, but shall abide the day. 58. And the earth shall be given unto them for an inheritance, and they shall multiply and wax strong. <sighs> Sounds like an LDS dream. Multiplication. We can do that. Just like lemmings. And their children shall grow up without sin unto salvation. Brainwashed as soon as possible. <sighs> Start before they even have language down. <laughs>
There it is. <laughs> 59. For the Lord shall be in their midst, and his glory shall be upon them, and he will be their king and their lawgiver. 60. And now, behold, I say unto you, it shall not be given unto you to know any further concerning this chapter until the New Testament be translated. Well, that's right. Joseph Smith was going to do his own translation of the New Testament, wasn't he? What happened to that? And in it all these things shall be made known. 61. Wherefore, I give unto you that ye may now translate it, that ye may be prepared for the things to come. 62. For verily I say unto you that great things await you. 63. Ye hear of wars in foreign lands, but behold, I say unto you, they are nigh, even at your doors. And not many years hence, ye shall hear of wars in your own lands. All the time. That's always happening. Somewhere. 64. Wherefore I, the Lord, have said, Gather ye out from the eastern lands, assemble ye yourselves together, ye elders of my church, go ye forth into the western countries, call upon the inhabitants to repent, and inasmuch as they do repent, build up churches unto me. 65. And with one heart, and with one mind, Gather up your riches. Sounds like socialism. That ye may purchase an inheritance which shall hereafter be appointed unto you. 66. And it shall be called the New Jerusalem, a land of peace, a city of refuge, a place of safety for the saints of the Most High God. 67. And the glory of the Lord shall be there, and the terror of the Lord also shall be there, insomuch that the wicked will not come into it, and it shall be called Zion. 68. And it shall come to pass... among the wicked, that every man that will not take his sword against his neighbor must needs flee into, unto Zion for safety. 69. And there shall be gathered unto it out of every nation unto under heaven, and it shall be the only, and it shall be the only people that shall not be at war with one another. Seventy, and it shall be said among the wicked, Let us not go up to battle against Zion, for the inhabitants of Zion are terrible. Wherefore, we cannot stand. Seventy-one, and it shall come to pass. <coughs> The righteous shall be gathered out from among all nations, and shall come to Zion singing with songs of everlasting joy. 72. And now I say unto you, keep these things from going abroad unto the world, until it is expedient in me that ye may accomplish this work in the eyes of the people and in the eyes of your enemies, 
that they may not know your works until ye have accomplished the thing which I have commanded you. 73. That when they shall know it, that they may consider these things. 74. And when the Lord shall appear, he shall be terrible unto them, that fear may seize upon them, and they shall stand afar off and tremble. 75. And all nations shall be afraid because of the terror of the Lord and the power of his might. Even so. Amen. That's it for 45. That was long. It sounded like Matthew for the most part, but I didn't look at the footnotes. But let me know if you learned something. I wasn't really paying attention, just trying to get through it. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. I'm having a mean bean myself.